Hello lovelies, Corey here. Welcome back to Wilder Woman. Long time no see. <laughs> and there is good reason for that. So when I last left you guys, I was getting ready to have a baby. That was at the end of March. Well, said baby was born on April 1st. Oh, and she is gorgeous. She's doing well. She's with her parents who are over the moon and with her big brother. Uh, this was, it was a really good birth and it was a high note for me to sort of close this chapter of my life. You know, this was my third surrogacy journey. For those of you not aware, have not been following me on social media, this was the third time that I have assisted families being the gestational carrier. And what that means is that they will transfer an embryo to my womb uh, to grow, hopefully, into a little babe. And that's exactly what happened. In this scenario, it took us two transfers to get a successful pregnancy and this lovely little bean was born on April 1st, and it was luckily a very easy delivery, probably the easiest delivery that I've had. I have an amazing OB, though, so he just was so supportive. The nurses on staff were amazing, and this was, as I said, a, a high note to end on. However... A little over two weeks after delivering said baby on 418, my family and I got into a really bad car accident. Can't really go into a lot of details other than it was not our fault. <laughs> and it involved three vehicles, ours and two others. And because of it, I ended up with a broken right foot, a broken right wrist and hand, my hand went through the windshield. You can see there's still some healing that's being done here, and that's why my fingers are all wrapped up. <clears throat> Not going to unwrap those for you because you don't need to see all of that. This is like after almost six weeks of healing to get to this point. And I'm still working on healing. Um, however, I don't necessarily need my right hand or my right foot to be able to pop on camera and talk to you guys. However, you know, I've just recently become mobile enough to even get into the living room, <laughs> let alone sit down in front of a computer for any length of time. So I've been MIA. I've been MIA focused on healing. You know, I still had the delivery to heal from. <laughs> and less than two weeks after that, bad car accident. Um, and now I have those injuries to heal from. And it's not just physical healing, it's, you know, emotional healing as well. I still get really tense whenever someone drives me. Uh, so being in a car for me right now is not the most amazing feeling in the world. I get really nauseous at the very least, because I also have vertigo. That's awesome. Uh, the little balls in your ears that kind of, you know, control your balance and stuff have shifted. So when I lay flat, you know, completely flat, I get dizzy and the horn starts spinning. And basically my body has to recalibrate for a few minutes before it stops and then I'm normal again. But when I sit up, it happens again. So I've pretty much stayed in bed the last five or six weeks when I'm not, you know, being driven to doctor's appointments, which really, really sucks. But there you have it, working on healing, working on getting to a point where I'll at least be able to get back to working again. <laughs> So I'm, you know, off of work from my job, unfortunately. I can't drive myself to work. Um, but even if I could, can't type. I'm right-handed. So filling out, you know, paperwork has been fun. Learning how to brush my teeth has been fun. Uh, 
learning how to do basically everything with my left hand. And I'm not even the least bit ambidextrous, so this has been a struggle. <laughs> it has been an emotional, frustrating, intense five weeks, let me just tell you, from the time of the accident. And we're still reeling from it. You know, there's claims adjusters to deal with, there's hospitals, there's multiple hospitals, lawyers, bills. Um, this has been a very trying experience for us, for my family. And I mean, I need help to do everything just about everything. And for someone like me, who is used to being the one taking care of everything, that's been an adjustment. It's been a really big adjustment in my house. And with that, as I mentioned, it's, there's been a really big emotional component to the healing. So, that being said, hi, I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> I wanted to at least pop on here and give you guys a video of I'm, I'm still around. I just had some personal stuff that I had to focus on for the last two months. And that sucks. But I will be back <laughs> in the full swing of things. And, you know, because I've had time on my hands, the, I, I've been reading a lot. So the depth year that I had started in 2019, as you can well imagine, is gone. <laughs> I've just decided, you know what, 2019 is not the year for me to do a depth year, and that's okay. At some point, I may start it up again, because that's a great thing. You can start a year at any time. You don't have to start on the first. I can start my depth year at any time, and it doesn't even need to be a year. It can be any length of time that I want. So when I'm ready, that piece is there for me to take up again. And right now, it's just not a good time. And that's okay. I've accepted that. In addition to that, this is my 20th year already <laughs> practicing witchcraft, you know, cast my first spell officially started on this journey in 1999. My God. Um, <laughs> and every few years I go through this cycle of exploring a new avenue anyway. You know, my last big cycle of exploration was in 2012. That was a huge shift in my practice because that's when I started working with pendulums. Uh, there were also a lot of shifts at that time too. That's when I started taking workshops on shamanic journey. I hadn't really explored a lot of the astral realms until that point other than the fairy realms because my practice started off really, really rooted in solitary Wiccan practices. So anything I could digest from Scott Cunningham, Silver Raven Wolf, Teen Witch was the first book on witchcraft I ever purchased. Um, you know, so I took a lot from her. I took a lot from Witch Fox. I don't know if any of y'all remember Witch Fox. It's still around. Um, and other scrolling HTML sites from the 90s, you know, when the internet was still a baby. Ugh, taking me back right now, guys. Uh, also books from, you know, Raven Gramasi, DJ Conway. I have a lot of her stuff. Eden McCoy, Fairy Folk, is still a book that's near and dear to my heart. But that's where my practice was rooted in. You know, all of the folks who said, yes, you know, traditionally trained Wiccans, but were like, you don't need coven life. You can do this on your own. Because in the late 90s, even early 90s, you know, throughout the 90s, Wicca had the solitary, you know, emergence. Where in the metaphysical world and communities, 
it was kind of taboo to say, no, you don't need a coven. You can do this on your own. Because Wicca had been set up in coven format by Gerald Gardner, you know, for a specific reason. And then the other traditions that spawned off of it, Alex uh, Sanders, um, you know, the Dianic tradition, the Alexandrian tradition, Darnarian tradition, you know, all of these traditional <laughs> Wiccan traditions, original Wiccan traditions, I guess I, I could probably say, were, you know, where it was at. That was how you learned in coven settings. And as someone who is a solitary practitioner, when you're not in a coven setting and having lessons fed to you, you kind of have to look outside. You have to be a self-starter. You have to push yourself and, and look for ways to shake up your practice. Otherwise, it gets stagnant. You do the same things over and over again. Sometimes it becomes boring even. You're going through the motions and doing things just because that's the way you've always done them. But there's not really any growth because there's not a lot of challenge there. There's nothing new to engage your brain and break out of what has always been, okay? Or at least what has been for the last, you know, however many years. So every several years, I go through this kind of lull where my practice takes a hit because it's not stimulating for me anymore. Um, it's become same old, same old. And then I just start looking for a new avenue. Okay, well, what, what else can I explore? And this year, I've kind of fallen down the rabbit hole of more non-pagan craft practices. So actual traditional witchcraft, grimoire practices, and that kind of was sparked by uh, one of the blog videos from Avalon Cameron, where she was sharing a book called Apocalyptic Witchcraft, which she purchased off of Scarlet Imprint, which made me start to dig into Scarlet Imprint four books later. <laughs> I'm reading through these. One of those was Apocalyptic Witchcraft. And... I was like, you know what? This is amazing. And it's a different flavor from what I've been reading from Llewellyn over the last few years or anything that's come out of especially Hay House. This is, you know, left path stuff. So it's been, it's been an experience. Even if I don't agree with everything that I'm reading, being able to see a different perspective is pretty awesome. You know, these are books on high magic. These are books on, like I said, they're republications of medieval grimoires, new translations of old texts. And I'm even, you know, starting to fall down the path of looking more into the Golden Dawn, which is what inspired Gerald Gardner and Aleister Crowley and A.E. Waite, you know, all of those years ago. So pretty amazing stuff. I'm, I'm going further back. I'm like, okay, I have the new age information and foundation, but what was that built off of? I didn't even really begin to go down that path. And here I'm 20 years into my practice. So this has definitely been a more transformational year for me, <clears throat> much in the vein that 2012 was. So very excited about it. And I do have many shifts in between then. 2016, I got a wild hair and I got certified in crystal healing you know, pushed forward with Reiki attunements that I had started in 2012, um, you know, etc. Introduced essential oils into my practice as well in 2016, and those have been a huge game changer for me. 
but now, you know, I, I want to see a different side. I had been exploring more folk magic remedies for the last three years, and I'm still interested in that. You know, I'm really excited about Backwoods Witchcraft. I do want to purchase that. You know, looking into American Appalachian folk magic, just, you know, getting to the cultural roots of, you know, modern day American folk magic. But I also want to look at, you know, a lot of the older stuff too. It's good to have a foundation of where we came from to compare to where we are now. And also seeing that contrast between high magic, you know, ritualistic uh, invocations, et cetera, and then low magic, which, you know, is pulling together herbs and solves and, you know, more folksy and sometimes fly by the seat of your pants <laughs> type magic, right? I, I kind of attribute it to, okay, high magic is like baking, where you have to have every ingredient laid out perfectly. There's a formula, right, that you have to be, you know, it's an exact science. And then low magic is just like cooking. I'm going to throw a dash of this, a little of that, and, you know, mix it up. You're not really measuring a whole lot of stuff. But it's the imagination, the, it, it's a lot more intuitive, I feel like, in nature. And you could completely disagree with me with that analogy. That's totally fine. <laughs> that's how I reconcile the two in my brain. Um, but that's where I've been, reading <laughs> and healing. So really, that brings me to my next point. <clears throat> in this video, which is just, I can at least sit in front of a camera. I can't really create a lot of content for you guys. Like I said, right-handed. I'm working, I'm starting physical therapy this week. Um, but this is how far I can put my hand into a fist. Ugh. And, and that took a lot of work. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's progress. <laughs> um, but, you know, because my fingers were wrapped up due to my hand going through the windshield, um, I had a lot of tissue damage and a lot of glass that needed to get cleaned out. There's even still some glass embedded in here, guys. Um, and because of all of this, my tendons and fingers have kind of gotten cement-like. So there's going to be a lot of physical therapy that needs to take place before I get full function back in my hand. But the doc says, you know, I'll be able to get full function back. So I'm not worried. It's just, it's going to take time. And I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> so I hope that you guys are more patient than I am and that you'll bear with me on this journey as I try and figure things out. But in the meantime, like I said, I can sit in front of a camera. Because I'm reading, I can at least share book reviews with you guys. I can't necessarily do deck reviews. I would like to pick that up at some point because I have gotten some new decks in uh, that were pre-orders, like I had mentioned at the beginning of the year, and there's still even more coming through the Muse Tarot and the Lightseer's Tarot, the two creations from Chris Ann Donnelly. Those are getting ready to print and ship out. Very excited for those, my God. But, you know, while all this went down, I got the True Black Tarot. It is as gorgeous as I thought it would be. My God, I'm so glad I have that deck. Um, Let's see, what else? There have been several decks that have come in that I would love to share with you guys, but I can't shuffle. Uh, this has been so frustrating for me. 
I had to learn how to brush my teeth using my left hand, feed myself with the left hand. I can't shuffle cards. Um, you know, so I haven't been doing any tarot readings. This has been a very frustrating experience for me. Let's just put it that way. Um, so reading <laughs> is about all I can do as far as my spiritual practice. And even then, I can't really take notes, at least not on paper. So I haven't been writing in my book of mirrors either. You guys, you guys, I want to heal. <laughs> I want to get back to my life. But I understand that I can't rush the job. So I have been trying to type one-handed, hunting and pecking on the keyboard, but taking basically video diaries has been, you know, the best option that I have in order to take notes and at least record thoughts so that when I have use of my hand again, I can go back and fill in pages in my book of mirrors to get me back to, you know, current time frame. <clears throat> but that also means that there probably won't be any blog posts until after I'm at work for a while. I don't really want to push it. And with physical therapy and everything, it's going to be hard enough to sit at a computer and type for eight hours a day. I probably won't even be typing eight hours a day. Honestly, when I come back, it's, I'm going to have to take it slow somehow. And then I just, I won't be able to push my body to then sit down at the end of that day and write blog posts. So YouTube is all you got right now. And it's not going to be fancy because I'm not even going to be creating, you know, fancy thumbnails or intros or anything for these videos. You're just going to see a talking head. Good news is, is that you don't necessarily need to look at the screen. You can just play the video while you're doing laundry or something else, which I will be very envious of because I can't even do that right now. <laughs> don't feel bad for me. At least I have Netflix. So I have been reading. And if you guys would like to see book reviews, maybe on the four books that I purchased from Scarlet Imprint, I also ordered. Uh, the three amazing books from Devin Hunter's uh, Witches series, which is Witches Power, Witches Spirit, and there's one other one. What is that book called? Oi, hang on. I'm I'm sure I can pull it up here because I purchased the ebook copies. Okay. And it is Witch's Book of Mysteries. There we go. So Witch's Book of Power, Witch's Book of Spirits, and Witch's Book of Mysteries. So I'm going to start on the first one. The Witch's Book of Power, I believe, is the first one. And could definitely do a video, one on each of them, or if you guys want a video at the end of that series and kind of have me recap the whole thing. Let's see, I've also purchased a lot of books that I had way back in the day that I either lent to somebody else and never got back or were donated and I was like, shit, why did I donate that book? <laughs> So I've been repurchasing some of those books and I can do like a, a video on m what my original thoughts were versus rereading it again and having like, you know, that decade or more in between readings and, and giving you guys my take on that. Um, also, like I said, there were four books that I purchased from Scarlet Imprint. And I've been digging around at other indie occult publishers. Uh, Troy Books, I just purchased two books from them today, which I'm really excited about. I'm, you know, interested in, there have been a couple others that I've been looking 
around at. There's one publisher I forget the name of, but they've got only two books available right now, and both are on Hecate. So, you know, some interesting things there. I could also talk to you guys about the publishers themselves and kind of do a review on them, tell you my thoughts on what shipping was like, customer service, um, Troy Books so far, A plus in the customer service department. I tried buying the books yesterday through PayPal and they kept failing. I tried twice. I was like, okay, well, maybe there's just an issue on my end with PayPal right now. I'll try, you know, again tomorrow. I woke up this morning to an email from one of their reps who said, hey, just wanted to reach out to you because of the two failed attempts yesterday. A lot of customers have been experiencing issues with PayPal. It's on our end. We've been working with PayPal to try and resolve. But if you're still interested in going through the purchase, I can send you a Stripe invoice for the two books that you wanted to get. And I was like, um, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so took care of that this morning. Very, very lovely gal. So shout out to Jane. Thank you, Jane. You are amazing. And thank you for all of your help getting that settled. So can't wait for those two books to show up. They are coming from England though, so might be a hot minute until I'm able to re do reviews on those. But if you guys want to see reviews, now these are a little bit more, you know, like I said, these are more occult practice, a little bit more esoteric and a lot less mainstream than the type of titles that are coming out on Llewellyn right now, Weiser Books, uh, Hay House especially. So if you guys are interested in that, would love to share with you guys, do reviews. If you're like, nah, that's not my cup of tea, keep it mainstream, can do that as well and focus just on more pagan and Wiccan-based books. But let me know, all right? That's basically it, guys. Just wanted to pop on here because I haven't sat down to chat with you in a hot minute, and I miss it. <laughs> and I just wanted to say hi. Let you guys know I'm still around. This channel is still active. Just took an impromptu hiatus. But want to come back and want to come back hard to stay relevant in this community, to continue to talk to you guys, to continue to share ideas. My practice has gotten very bare bones. Can't necessarily be lighting candles, doing a whole lot at the moment, but there has been a lot of introspection, a lot of reading, a lot of pendulum work with the left hand, which has been interesting. I have some thoughts on that. I can share that in a video with you guys. And yeah, just, it's been me and the gods and physical healing and introspection for the past several weeks. It's funny how the universe will change things up for you, whether or not you're, you feel like you're ready for it. <laughs> Not to say that the universe shoved me into this car accident. Shit happens. And this was a case of a driver not paying attention. Uh, we were very lucky that I was actually following a, you know, not intentionally. <laughs> we were traveling down the road behind a highway patrol vehicle who had just passed when the accident occurred, saw part of it and, you know, made an immediate U-turn and came back and he was the first person to get to me and put out the fire that had started on our car. And, you know, just call uh, paramedics 911 and get everybody that needed to be there on the scene. So, very, very grateful 
the circumstances were just aligned in such a way that oof, if we had to get into an accident that bad, everything happened in the way that it needed to happen to minimize the amount of damage. It was just amazing. I sit here sometimes thinking about it and looking at photos and I'm just in shock that everything lined up the exact way it should have um, because this could have been a lot worse. You guys, I may not have walked away from this crash um, just with the way that everything went down and I'm so grateful that I did. I can still be mad that it happened and grateful that it wasn't worse. So there you have it. Just wanted to share with you guys why I had been MIA. See your thoughts about doing book reviews, book videos on the channel for a little while. It's not going to turn completely into a book review channel. Although, if you guys want me to create a second channel just for book reviews, let me know your thoughts on that. I also have some fiction books that I'm reading right now that we could add to the mix. Let me know what you think. If not, that's great too. We can just intersparse the book review videos on this channel. But like I said, you ain't gonna get anything fancy for a little while, at least not until this is all healed. <laughs> all right, lovelies, that's it. I hope I didn't ramble on too long for you. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you click that button, okay? And ring the bell so that you know when the next video comes up, it's gonna notify you. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't notify you, which is really kind of shicey, YouTube. You guys suck. Um, <laughs> thank you for giving us a platform, but not so happy with the changes you've made recently. And let me know in the comments what you guys want to see, okay? Because I missed you guys, and I want to come back. <laughs> All right, lovelies. Hope to see you in the next video. And until then... Blessed be.